In March of 2022, I challenged myself to write 31 pieces of music in 31 days and release YouTube videos all along the way. So what did I learn from that? Well, number one, I can do it because I did it. And number two, I'm probably never gonna do it again. So it's March 1st, 2022. Hey, it's day two, day three, day four, day five, day oh, six. It's day seven, day eight. Hey, it's March 9th, my birthday. Day 10, day 11, day 12, day 13, 14, 15, day 16, 17, 18, 19. It's day 20, day 21, 22, 23, 24, of 25, day 26, 27, 28, day 29, it's day 30, it's day 31 of my composed 31 pieces of music in 31 days challenge. Can you believe it? We made it. Even though I loved the thrill of 31 deadlines in 31 days, I didn't so much like the fact that I basically had to write a piece and then chuck it and move on to something else. So I probably won't be doing this again uh, for 31 days at least. I do like the idea of maybe every once in a while doing a video where it's just like, I wrote this piece in a day, here you go. But 31 days straight of brand new pieces and video editing really takes its toll. I mean, I couldn't give time to anything else. A social life, other pieces, family. I mean, I barely watch TV, which some could view as a positive. I didn't get to celebrate spring break with my wife. Now this wasn't so much because of the composing, it was more the video part. Because some days I would finish a piece of music in a couple hours, and then I had to spend another couple hours editing the video. Though my video editing did get faster, and I feel like my video work improved as I went, but it just still took a long time. Ow, my toe. By the way, I'm considering making another video similar to this, but about making 31 YouTube videos in 31 days. If you'd be interested in that, let me know. This is a, this is kind of a con, but also a pro. Um, I have 31 pieces now that I have to wade through. I mean, some of them were awesome, and I can't wait to do that. Some of them, and I'm like, these were okay, and they may not, I may never do anything with them, but <laughs> that's 31 pieces that are now also on my to-do list of finishing. Uh, a quick story. <laughs> so one of the days I mentioned, if you watched the video, that I actually wrote a cue for my hopefully upcoming short film, and I didn't want to share it with you because it was only 45 seconds long and I wanted to do something more significant. Well, fast forward to April, and I pulled that piece out to try to work on it. And apparently in my haste, because of the 31 pieces, I have to get something done, I saved incorrectly, and whatever samples I had recorded myself to use in that, uh, the directories got switched, and now they're gone. So this piece that I was really proud of, and didn't even put on film, <laughs> is gone. So yeah, I lost a piece of music that I think would have been perfect for my short film. So that's a bummer. So that was the kind of negative. Uh, what were the good things I learned? Well, there were a bunch of them. Number one was, once I got into a groove and like kind of got past all the negativity and had an idea that worked, I can pretty much bank on being able to crank out at least two minutes of music. I mean, granted, some of my pieces were shorter than two minutes, but that's because that's what they needed to be. Another thing is just how awesome samples are. I'd been working with software synths for a long time, and whenever I started adding in samples, it just kind of changed it. It felt more organic and inspiring. So if nothing else, this month gave me the knowledge of how to use samples. Worth it. A huge realization this month was how loud my inner editor is normally. Whenever I'm working on a piece for a month or more, uh, the editor will just sit on my shoulder saying, yeah, you can do better than that. And I will spend an entire day writing 15 seconds of music or spend an entire day and have a minute less of music than I had the day before. I couldn't do that this month. Anytime my inner editor would speak up, I mean, if it was early in the day, I'd listen to him. But as the day went on, I'd listen less and less and be like, nope, I have a deadline. I've got to get this out. And it was, it was really awesome. I really hope that I can carry that into future compositions. The whole concept that perfect is the enemy of good was kind of my mantra this month. A big thing I learned was just how real things become when you make it public. Like making this public challenge and having people holding me accountable every day was huge. Like I've made some 
claims and goals in the past that I just kind of let fester and disappear because I didn't make it public enough without the accountability of the people on YouTube. It would have been really easy for me to just be like, eh, I'll do it later. Uh, this didn't work. I'll try it again next year. So, yeah. If you have a goal and you want to do it, make it public and do it. Yeah, this challenge helped me to connect with people in all kinds of places. In some cases, in my city, and in some cases, across the world. Like, literally, on the other side of the world. It's really neat to know that when I hit publish on YouTube, there might be people over in Europe watching it, so... And then, just as cool that there might be people in my hometown of Springdale watching it. Really neat. So I ran into a few people early on, uh, whenever I started this, and they asked me how I was doing with it, and I was like, yeah, it's, it's good, I'm learning a lot, probably never gonna do it again. Um, but once I got past that first week or so, my mentality changed, and I was a lot more optimistic about things like instead of dwelling on the negative of like man this isn't working I guess I'll go to take three you know I I just knew I need to get it done and I did it I did it I feel like once I forced myself into that creative mindset day after day my brain started rewiring itself and instead of just letting myself find easy outs I pushed through yeah and I felt as the month went by I was quicker and quicker to find the ideas that worked and also quicker to dismiss the ones that I knew wouldn't work. And there were a handful of days where I was super pumped to wake up and I had the ideas and I started working on it before I even had my coffee. Those were really exciting days. A few quick positives. I found that I used social media a whole lot less over the course of the month because I just didn't have time to doom scroll. And you know, I'm pretty sure I was happier. So because of that, I have decided to take a little break from Twitter and Instagram, and <laughs> I'm basically always on a break from Facebook. I'll still check in for the sake of business, like in case somebody's reaching out to me with an opportunity, but I'm gonna set a goal to not spend more than like 60 seconds <laughs> on each platform each day. I existed until 2017 without being on social media, other than <laughs> a short stint on MySpace in college, and I did just fine. I don't think I need it. At least not to the degree I used to. And by the way, there's always time for Animal Crossing. A big thing this month was that I learned how to use Logic Pro like a whole lot better. Like the usage of the Quick Sampler, uh, other third-party plugins like the Piano Book samples. Man, those are awesome. Uh, great to have a resource that just instantly lets me get my hands on fresh sounds. I learned the factory settings for the output where you could like just say I want this to be broadcast ready and instead of me messing around with compressors and limiters and EQ and all kinds of stuff like that it allowed me to just write the music and as long as I had it within certain parameters I just set broadcast ready in the factory and it sounded better. So I mean sure I'm sure if I went in and really tweaked with those settings, I could make it sound a little better. But it's cool to know that there's something out there if I just want to write the music and get it out there. On a more creative note, I loved what this month did to my creativity. Like, I woke up excited to create something. Even whenever I'm working on a deadline for a, a significant commission, sometimes you wake up uninspired and you're just like, ah, I'll put it off. But just knowing that at the end of this month I was going to have 31 pieces, if I did the work, if I showed up, it was really exciting. So I woke up, excited to come in to the studio and get to work. And in fact, the first couple days of April, I was just aimless. You should have seen me. I'm just like wandering around the house, trying to decide what to do. So I spent a little bit of April catching up with all the stuff I neglected. But even whenever I would try to get some music done, it was scary how quickly I could fall back into my routine of, eh, I'll work on something later but it's good to know how quickly I can get back to it if I just make myself do it. This is a big one, I think. Uh, anytime I start to feel imposter syndrome, which I feel sometimes, I can just click on my YouTube playlist of this month and see I made 31 pieces of music. So maybe these pieces will help me get out of ruts in the future. I learned that I like using a DAW, a digital audio workstation, a whole lot more than I expected to. Like whenever I decided I wanted to be a composer, I imagined myself sitting at a grand piano with a feather quill pin writing music like Beethoven and Chicago Symphony playing it, stuff like that. But it's harder and harder to 
live that life now. You have to have so many different things that you're working on as a composer if you want to make a living. And spending a day working on a piece and being done with something that is actually something that people can listen to and feel like, hey, that sounds good, is a lot different than writing a piece, working on the sheet music, handing it to an ensemble, and waiting a week, a month, a year to hear your notes and sometimes never getting to hear it. So getting to work in a digital audio workstation and have a finished product at the end of the day that you can let the world experience is really cool. Hey, pumpkin. It makes me think that I'd like to work even harder to get into the composing for media side of things because I like this workflow and I think I could get better at it. So I think after the 31 days, I managed to come up with a handful of things that I am excited to put into other projects, like my 80s album, which I've already been working on a third piece for, a bunch of music for my short film, and also I've been wanting to develop kind of a live performance set using tape loops and synthesizers, and I have a couple pieces in the works for that. So three new projects in addition to just pieces of music that I want to use. You know, a bunch like background music for YouTube videos, maybe to send to some uh, music libraries so that other people can use it in their creative projects. So I couldn't help but realize how much of my music ended up being in a minor key, kind of on the creepy side of things. And I mean, I'm not bothered by that. It was just kind of interesting. I almost had to work to make something simple and happy. I don't know where all this creepy music is coming from, but I'm okay with it. I enjoy it, I like the way it sounds, and I've got a few ideas of how to use it, so. I'm not going to question the muse in this case. Before 2022, I'd never tried to actually write anything in a cinematic style, but I, over the course of the last few months, I've dipped my toe into that a little bit more, and I feel like I have a decent cinematic voice. So that's something I would definitely like to pursue, either making my own films or collaborating with other filmmakers. By the way, if you're a filmmaker who happens to have stumbled upon this video, and you'd be interested in collaborating, please reach out. So last couple positive things that aren't exactly music related. Um, one was it forced me to finally learn how to use this camera. Uh, I, I hope that you feel like my camera work has improved and my lighting of the videos has improved over the course of the 31 videos. I actually learned how to use the autofocus a little bit better, <laughs> or rather the manual focus with autofocus to dial in the focus. I've said focus a lot. But yeah, I, I feel like my editing and everything has at least sped up, if not actually improved. It makes me more likely to want to do more of this in the future, since I kind of know how to do things a little bit more fluidly now. And lastly, making videos through the course of the month forced me to kind of dial in my studio a little bit more. You may have noticed things changed a bit over the course of the 31 days, like, I could actually use my workbench for music. Uh, I got rid of my old printer and moved my new laser printer out of the way a little bit so that I actually have a workspace to do synthesizer things. I finally hung my cables, which is something I've been meaning to do for a long time. I got tired of tripping over them. So <laughs> if the 31 days was good for nothing else, it helped me organize things a little bit better. So will I do it again? Maybe? Uh, probably not for a whole month, and definitely not on a month that spring break or another vacation happens. But it was a good experience, and it changed who I am as a composer. Maybe I'll do some more videos like this, but more on a sporadic basis, like, Alright, I wrote this piece in a day, let's put a video out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't had a chance to check out all of my Composing 31 Pieces in 31 Days videos, I'll go ahead and put a playlist link right here and if you just want to hear the pieces i'll put a link right here and i'll see you 